Hello guys, welcome back. So we will continue with our lectures about immunology and remember we are continuing with the cellular immunology or the cells which take part in immune system. So we have reached up to T cells. So I would really say that we have reached to the lymphocytes and, and I hope that we know that there are two types of lymphocytes. We have B cells and we have T cells. So we will talk about B cells at a later time. We are talking about T cells today. Uh, this again about the discussions about the T cells are going to be a set of lectures. This is our first lecture. In this what I would do is I will create a bigger picture of how T cells function. What are their types? Then we will talk about the journey of the T cells. When a T cell is produced in the bone marrow, from there how does it go to thymus, how does it go to lymph node, how does it hone in to the area which is infected and go and perform its function. So after that we will see how the T cell receptors are produced, we will see how the signaling mechanism within the T cells are done and then we will see what are the abnormalities which can be. Um, present with the T cells, we would of course also see what are the environmental influences on the T cells, how do they modulate their function. After the T cells, we will talk about the B cells. So again, this is part of the acquired immunity. So uh, T and B cells are acquired immune systems, we are talking about the T cells today. So the very first thing we will talk about are the type of T cells. So if you see here, uh, we have our little projector going. So if you see there, there are multiple topics on the T cells. The most important topic which we should look at is the today uh, is the types of the T cells. So of course within the types here are various types we will we'll just very quickly discuss those and then we will move on to the journey of the T cells and how do the T cells go and go and work where they work. So let us talk about the T cell types. So I would once again, um, so if we start with the T cells, lymphocytes T cell and B cells usually are bigger cells with big nuclei, very small cytoplasm and the reason for that is that when these cells are generated in the bone marrow these cells are really not yet active. These cells are not actually fighting any infections. So due to that the cytoplasm does not have a lot of proteins in that, they does, these cytoplasms are not active cytoplasms. Due to that these are rimmed, these have a small rim of cytoplasm, less cytoplasmic material, bigger nucleus. Now same is the truth for the T cells as well that these are lymphocytes if you see big uh, nucleus in the center, T cells can be divided in multiple types. So here is first type helper T cell, we will we'll talk about their function that how do the helper T cells help, what do they do, but we talk about helper T cells then we will talk about these are also called CD4 positive T cells and that is what these are the CDs or cluster of differentiation or cluster of designation protein number 4. What that means is that if you, if you think about a cell, so let us say this is a cell. I have cut the cell in half and of course you will see the nucleus sitting in the center and you will see other proteins and, and functional structures. On the membrane in the membrane of the cell you find proteins. These proteins of course are, for, are found by various people who are doing research and as they find a unique protein structurally or functionally they give it a name and most of the time these proteins are clustered so we call them cluster of differentiation or cluster of designation and there are numbers. So number 1 or number 2 depending upon when these are found. Nowadays they are not actually just going sequentially, they are trying to 
associate the number with some other things as well. For example, T helper 17 cells have interleukin 17. So, uh, we will we'll talk more about it, but anyways the, the uh, these are the proteins. So, CD4 positive mean a T cell which expresses on its surface is CD4 molecules or a cluster of CD4 molecule that is why it is CD4 positive. On the other hand we also have cytotoxic, cytotoxic T cells which are called CD8 positive and what that what does that mean? What that means is that on their surface so if this is a cell and this is a nucleus on their surface these guys express CD8 protein that is why these are called CD8 positive uh, cells. Then we know from our previous lectures about immunology we know that we have we have the natural natural killer cells. Remember I make a natural killer cell like this it, this is a guy which wears a eye patch and it is a it is a really bad guy. So, this is that guy who is pervert who has gotten this hand here and it it you know massages and checks every cell and if it finds cell some cell which are not good or healthy it kills them. So, this is that natural killer cell. Natural killer cells are actually type of T cells. T cells are part of acquired immu immunity, but remember that natural killer cell I have described it in my previous lectures natural killer cell have become part of innate immunity. These cells broke rank from the remaining T cells group from the acquired immunity went and joined the forces of the innate immune system. So, natural killer cells are there then uh, we have gamma, gamma delta T cells as well. Um, we will talk about what these are not very important at this time maybe tomorrow when their function is further clear uh, we will know and study more of these in detail at this time just know that there is a gamma delta T cell as well these T cells have gamma and delta chains on them. Now, helper T cells in turn are they pass from various stages and then they become functional in various ways. So, these are subdivided into T helper 0 which then becomes mature into T helper 1 and T helper 2 I should not say and I should say or a helper T cell can become T helper 1 or it can become T helper 2. Then some helper T cells they become T reg regulatory T cells they become T regulatory cells and then we can also end up having T helper 17 cells. So, why not 1, 2, 3, 4? So, T helper 1 yes, T helper 0 yes we have it, T helper 1 yes we have it, T helper 2 yes we have them, T helper 3 are actually one type of T regulatory cells. T regulatory cells are further divided into two types, we call them natural and adaptive. So, we call them natural and adaptive these adaptive T regulatory cells are called T helper 3 cells. On the other hand there is another type which is called T helper 17. T helper 17 cells are supposed to be pro inflammatory cells and they are nowadays being um, pointed out as the ones which cause a lot of autoimmune diseases. So, research is still happening we will know more and more about them, but at this time just know that we have in the helper category we have T helper 0, 1, 2 T regulatory cells and T helper 17. So, T helper 17 are mostly pro inflammatory, T regulatory cells are anti inflammatory and T helper perform a function which is really very important. So, right now after this classification we will go to those functions and see how does that how what what do we mean by this and then cytotoxic CD8, cytotoxic T cells can also be called <coughs> 